That was Man in the Mirror with Michael Jackson. You're listening to Sunshine Meets on Dublin's new Sunshine 106.8. My special guest this evening is Dr. Patrick Tracy. Um, we were we were just listened to a Michael Jackson song, Patrick. Um, you were given a special place in Michael Jackson's heart. Well, I suppose the fans have been very good to me. I, I sort of, I suppose, have stood by um, Michael's legacy since he died and been, I suppose, lucky enough to have been given a couple of things. One of them, they're referring to their one website that had a million dots for fans worldwide making up Michael's visage or his face. Uh, they were made by David Ilan, who's a very famous um, um, pointillism artist in California. And I suppose 30 people were given a place in Michael's heart, and I was one of them, along with Diana Ross and his family, and uh, that, that was quite an honour. And give me your, your little escapade in the Guggenheim Museum. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose it was quite funny. This, the award was going to be given to me in the area. Myself and David Ilan were standing in front of um, a particular painting, um, one of the... Um, let's say quite a famous impressionist painting by a very very famous impressionist painter and I had a camera in like I normally do and the um, are you allowed cameras? No you're not and the security (laughs) man came over to me and said sorry you're not allowed to take any pictures here you've got to take it away you know and um, Michelle Easter who was with us was taking a picture of myself and David beside this very famous um, picture of um, some flowers and um he turned around and said, sorry, you cannot do it, you know. And um, I turned around and I went over and said, but he's a very famous artist, you know. <laughs> he says, oh, is he, you know, meaning David, you know. And she took a, allowed him, us to take one picture then, just, you know. <laughs> and when I was uh, further down in the museum, near, near actually the painting of Louis XIV, another famous one, he came over and he tapped me in the arm, you know. And he was um, a lovely Afro-American gentleman with sort of, you know, uh, his hair thinning, gone white, and he turned around and says, I know now who he is. I know that famous artist. It's Van Gogh. You're just standing in front of... <laughs> classic, Patrick, <clears throat> classic. Well, we're coming now, Patrick, to your final piece of music. Where are we being led to now? Well, I suppose that's what we all want to know with our present government. But anyway, if we just go back here to um, one of the biggest events that happened, I suppose, um, happened, as you know, on January the 12th, 2010, when um, the island of Haiti was struck by, I suppose, seven um, or a four seven uh, magnitude earthquake. And um, it was the first earthquake of that magnitude in, in Haiti in over 200 years and certainly, you know, my heart went out you know, to the people when I seen it originally uh, it was just horrendous from the point of view that um, I felt that I had to be there with the people and um, I left in the period just after I suppose the earthquake had happened and the stories that the people, you know, told us of having to um, saw people out of buildings with hacksaws and put them I suppose, in shopping trolleys and wheelbarrows and, you know, sort of bring them to different areas. And, you know, the simple mistakes that they made, you know, sort of, you know, cutting arms and legs off without leaving skin flaps. You know, the thing was that, of course, all the edges of the bones got infected and we had had that thing. And um, at the time, I... um, went out there with Peter Hanley, a good friend of mine in Dublin, and Peter Gannon, who um, had been out in Haiti before. And it was an interesting story where Peter Gannon originally was trying to cross the Dominican um, Republic border, sort of the Dior certification border, and he met up with a bishop, um, Pierre Dersillian, uh, who, who ran you know some of the camps in Tabara province. And, and uh, Bishop Dersillian, and if you're listening tonight, Bishop and Gladys, um, I say hi to you. They've recently been over in Ireland. We did the sort of walk in um, Mayo together with uh, Declan Tunney. And um, the, um, he was in Times Square two or three days after the um, earthquake with about 120,000 people around him. You'll see his speech. And, you know, um, Pierre is absolutely such a wonderful person. Um, when I arrived in Port-au-Prince, you know, sort of he met us with a 
green t-shirt with Ireland written on it and he threw his arms around Lovely. and he says Patrick I'm the only black Irish man in the Caribbean you know so amid all the horrendous sort of destruction around us he still had such a wonderful you know sort of thing to say and um, we went through the camps and you know met the people and uh, we have you know sort of in, in our own little way and um, the people from Haven were wonderful um, and the provided sanitation and toilets for the people and the, we built uh, something like 24 toilets from there, particularly um, Peter Hanley and Peter Gann have been down since and we keep very close um, I suppose connections with um, Haiti Great. before I come in tonight, believe it or not the bishop contacted me from um, Haiti and said they were going to name a street after me on the island which is wonderful you know? Yes, and um, I suppose the total um, warmth you get from the people you know sort of is almost analogous and is reciprocal um, to um, the warmth that I found of the people of Africa and uh, your original exposure to anything you know can be um, I suppose in some ways what you tend to make up your mind and because I lived in Dade County in Miami and lived in Aventura and Collins Avenue my only exposure to Haiti before this would have been where Haitian taxi drivers who aren't the most, yeah, I suppose, lovable people in the world. It's quite grumpy. And um, uh, when I went down to Haiti and discovered, oh my God, there's such a wonderful subculture there. Even though, you know, Sir Everett speaks French, uh, there's quite a spattering of English. And the children are just so wonderful. And, do you know, they're happier in many ways among the poverty than sort of, you know, our children are in Ireland or in the UK or in the United States. So, I mean, certainly the song that I'd like to remember um, all those wonderful I suppose uh, people in Haiti is again I suppose a Michael Jackson song and it's We Are The World For Haiti um, um, his music will live on and um, I still think he'll be the Mozart or Beethoven of the new era and certainly because of his particular empathy with um, other people he'll be remembered for his goodness Good, so let us go to We Are The World 25 for Haiti there is a time when we should heed a certain cause Cause the world, it seems, is right in this line Cause there's a chance for taking in needing our own lives Dr. Patrick Tracy, thank you. Stand by for Elvis Extra with Bill McLaughlin just after the news. Tom Cole Jr. has Sunshine Swing. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm Graham Day.